All right, YouTube, this is Tom at Buxton Auto. You've seen some of my videos before. Now I have a new video for you that I think will get a lot of attention. Uh, when I look at the videos that I've made, I've noticed that my videos about cars that I have for sale uh, are not getting a whole, whole lot, which makes sense. I mean, they're specific to a vehicle, but the video that I made earlier about the different types of titles we have here in Texas actually has had like 10 times the amount of views as my other videos. So I thought I would do a video today on the Texas bonded title. Uh, part of my business model is buying no title cars and uh, getting titles for them and then putting them up for sale. I wanna preface this with a couple of thoughts. Uh, one, this isn't a system on how to take a stolen car and get a title for it. That It doesn't work like that. Two, this is not a system for if there is a lien on the car getting a title for it. It's not a system about that. This is for legitimate, the guy lost his title, he's trying to sell his car, and he needs to get a title for it. Um, a lot of ways that this happens legitimately is uh, Joe Schmo has a car, he had a lien on it, he paid the lien off, the title was mailed to him, and then uh, rather than taking it back to the tax office to have that lien removed, he did nothing, and then he lost that title and sold the car to somebody. Now, he can't go get a copy of his title because he has a lien on it, according to the state, because he never cleared it. Or he sold it to someone, or it's been sold five times down the road, and now nobody knows who the actual registered owner is. So, in Texas, you can get a bonded title, which you are literally paying a bond in case that somebody comes back and has ownership claims against the vehicle, all right? Um, if there is a valid lien against the vehicle, a bonded title does not work, all right? This is legitimately somebody had their title, they lost their title, or that you sold the car, somebody sold the car to someone else. That someone else did not go register the car right away and then they lost the title and can't find the person they bought it from. So those are reasons why bonded titles are, are needed. If you look on Craigslist or Facebook, you will see a lot of ads that say, you know, titles missing, uh, my favorite, just need a bonded title, or easy to get a bonded title. Well, I always laugh because if it was so easy and you wanted to sell your car, wouldn't you go get a bonded title? Generally, people don't know how to do it or don't know how to research to find out if they can do it. Those are two important uh, differences there. Can you do it and how do you do it? So on this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it, how to do it legally, take you through the steps. It's very straightforward. After you've done one, uh, it'll change your world. If you're a car dealer that buys cars or if you're just an individual looking for a good deal on a car, uh, so let's get started. First, I will put the links to Buxton Auto's website below. I'll put the links to the applicable forms that you'll need from the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles below. And I'm going to run through the form um, and the process here and now. So if you're ready, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to do when you're looking at a car with no title is you want to make sure it's not stolen. Uh, you can call the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles regional office with the VIN number and ask them, I want to verify this vehicle is not stolen. I'm buying it without a title. Also, can you tell me if there is a valid lien? They will not tell you the name of the person that owns it or who the lien holder is or anything like that. They will tell you if it is stolen or not stolen, and they will tell you if there is a valid lien on it. Um, so that works during business hours. You can call uh, your local sheriff's department or police department uh, anytime. Don't call the emergency line, call the non-emergency line, tell them what you're trying to do. They will look it up for you. I have found uh, quite accidentally that there are national database websites for stolen vehicles. There's a drag time on that of a few days because we inadvertently bought one that we checked and it showed to be not stolen and in fact was. So I would call Texas Department of Transportation regional office, there's like five or six in the state, or your local law enforcement and just verify that that car has not been reported stolen. Now, 
if the lien is less than 10 years old, that's considered a valid lien. And when it comes time to buying your bond, the bond company is supposed to verify that the lien was taken care of. That's something to keep in mind. So you go look for a car. The guy tells you, uh, it's not in my name. I don't have the title. I bought it from a friend and he never gave me the title and um, I'm selling it. So let's say you called DMV, they tell you that there is not a valid lien on the car, okay? Then you're set. At that point, you'll make the uh, person that you're buying the car from fill you out a uh, bill of sale. Always, always get a bill of sale. And then ask them for a photo of their picture ID as um, you need it for the forms. Now, you don't really need it for the forms, but I always get it, I'm a dealer, I need to have it. Uh, if you're not a dealer, you probably should have it, but dealers definitely would get a copy, and we keep that in our file because we have to show where our cars are coming from. So you get your bill of sale, you get your photo of the guy's driver's license, you drag your car home, it's time to fill out the paperwork. So the form that you're gonna look for is Texas DMV form VTR 130 SOF. It's a PDF you can download on the internet. I'm gonna put it in the link below, so if you wanna pull one of those up now, uh, you come back to the video. We're gonna run through the questions real quick and uh, get going on the rest of the process. If you look at the top line of the form, pretty easy, vehicle identification number, year, make, body style, model. That's the top line. Fill that out. Vehicle purchased or obtained from, that's the person who signed your bill of sale. You also need to put in your odometer reading. Whether it is exempt or not, you will put the odometer reading. Then the date that you purchased the car and the purchase price. Applicant, that is you. You're going to put your first name, last name, middle name, or business name, whichever applies. Your mailing address. You will put an email address. And you will put your phone number, daytime phone number. They say it is required if you're mailing it, but I would do it no matter what. Uh, next line is applicant explanation. Basically, they want to know why do you need one? Why don't you have a title? On almost all of Buxton Auto's cars, our application, uh, our ex explanation is simply, we did not get a title when we purchased the vehicle. The seller did not have a title. So you would write that into that big uh, highlighted box, okay? Then there's 11 very basic questions, and I know you know all the answers to them, uh, and they're required to get the thing processed. One, do you live in Texas? It's a yes, no. Are you a military person stationed in Texas? A yes, no. Has the vehicle been titled in Texas? For today's argument, we're going to say yes, but we'll circle back to the no here in a little bit. Uh, is, the attempt, is the vehicle you are attempting to title non-repairable? No, it's always going to be a yes. That's, uh, I'm sorry, it's always going to be a no. It is not a non-repairable vehicle, okay? Is the vehicle you are attempting to title a salvage title? That would mean that it was uh, a salvage car and no uh, title. To be very clear, there's a big misconception about salvage, all right? Texas has rebuilt titles which are salvage cars that have been put back together and put back on the road and then branded under the odometer, dis under the remarks comment as rebuilt. They also have salvage titles. These are pink. These come from insurance auctions. Almost anybody just buying and selling cars, nobody has seen a pink title, just letting you know. Okay, are you in legal possession of the vehicle? Yes, you are. You paid money for it. You have a bill of sale, okay? Was the vehicle manufactured for sale or distribution in the United States? 99.999% of the vehicles, the answer is yes. It's a Ford, it's a Chevy, it's a Toyota, it's something that was imported. It's not a car from a third world country that was never imported into the US, so we know it meets the Department of uh, Transportation's uh, safety standards, okay? Is the vehicle an assembled vehicle from new or used parts or a kit? almost always no it's not a kit car it's a toyota it's a honda whatever is the vehicle complete the answer would need to be yes 
it is a, a running driving car or a car with a blown up motor, but it's all there, okay? And then is the vehicle 25 years or more old? If it is, you're gonna write in the dollar value of the vehicle. The reason they wanna know that is for when it comes to assigning the value of a bond. Um, bonds are 1.5 times the presumptive value, or in this case, it would be 1.5 times of the value that they're gonna give you. Now, then the last part is the certification. And you're just gonna read that. You're saying that it's your true and honest, um, that you have the vehicle, this is the VIN number, etc. And you're gonna sign your name and the date and put a check or money order for $15 made out to the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles in an envelope. You're going to send both the front and the rear page, which it does tell you, the second page is the rear page, it is the directions, but you're going to send them a check or money order for $15 with your evidence of ownership, which is your bill of sale, your copy of the driver's license of the individual that you bought it from, if he gave you one, also a copy of your driver's license or state issued ID card or uh, concealed handgun permit, or um, if it is a business, you will need to include a business card with your name on it and the business's name on it as well. Those are all listed under part one of the second page, which is the requirements. So you mail that off and it will come back to you in say 10 days. Down at the bottom of that second page, will come back filled out underneath where it says Texas DMV department use only. It will have uh, a bunch of shit filled into it, but what's most important to you is the bottom last line is the vehicle value and the far right side of that line is the bond amount. That's the magic number. That's how much you need to get your bond for. So this whole packet of crap has come back to you now with usually a letter or printout from the DMV as well. But what you need is the first page, second page, and on that second page, it will have the bond amount. Now it is time to go buy your bond. You can get bonds from any number of sources. You can Google them. If you have a local insurance agent that you work with, he's generally going to be your best bet. Um, a lot of times the bond for the car is dirt cheap. Uh, at Buxton Auto, we buy cars for say $500 to $2,000 without titles. I can tell you most of our cars, the bonds are 50 to 100 bucks. However, depending on where you're calling, these uh, people that advertise heavily on the internet, the place that's right out in front of the regional office in Carrollton, Texas, they charge you for a bond, and then there's a maintenance fee, service charge, whatever the hell you want to call it, which can be as much as the damn bond. So if you have a local agent that you work with, call them up, ask them if they write automobile surety bonds, and if they do, go take this letter to them. They will write you a bond. You will sign the bond. You'll get a power of attorney that comes with the bond, and you'll get a receipt for the bond, okay? Now you have added to your packet of crap for your bonded title. The next stop is your local county tax assessor. That's where you go to get your license plates or transfer titles or whatever. You will take <coughs> the next form, which is the Texas application for title. Let me tell you that form number. I have it saved. It is... Uh, 130-U, which is Texas application for title. Also downloadable on the DMV's website, also gonna be in a link below. And you will fill that form out to the best of your ability. It will be your 130-U signed by you with your information. Then it will be the 130-SOQ, whatever, the application for bond and title. It will be your proof of ownership, meaning your bill of sale from the individual, your photo ID, their photo ID, blah, blah, blah. And it will be the bond document from your insurance company. 
There is a spot on the bond if you're buying bonds that you download off the internet uh, where you need to sign the bond, okay? What's crucial is making sure that if your name is, uh, you know, John Smith, you're signing every document, every place as John Smith. Don't sign Jonathan, Jonathan Smith. Don't sign John F. Smith the third. You sign all of it exactly the same way. You take all of those documents with you to your county tax assessor. They will issue you a receipt for your title and then in 10 to two weeks you will get a title back it will be a blue title I want to make it clear a bonded title is not a rebuilt salvage title a bonded title simply means you literally have paid a bond so that if someone else comes forward that has a claim on this vehicle the state can pay out that bond to that person once you have done a bonded title gotten that receipt into your county tax office and they've issued a tire, title to you, you're done. You have no more worries. If you're a car dealer, you will want to explain to the customer what a bonded title is. I have done it uh, thousands of times. Well, okay, hundreds of times. Never had an issue. Uh, some customers ask. I've, I clarify for them what exactly it is. And I point them to the internet, to the TX uh, DMV website, so that they can see that I'm not, you know, pulling a fast one, selling them a salvage car or anything like that. So that, in 16 minutes and 39 seconds, tells you how easy it is to get a bonded title. There are uh, two more scenarios which we should at least touch base on before we call this video good and you uh, rush out and find the video, the uh, car that you want to buy. The first is on the question about if the car was currently registered in Texas. If the car has not been registered in Texas and Texas has no record of the vehicle, you have to have a separate form done by a certified, uh, what is it they call it? A certified auto theft detail police officer. That means that person is uh, qualified to do VIN inspections and they work full time on the theft department of their local police station. Uh, most tax offices have a name for individuals that do that, that you can call and set up an appointment with them. They charge 50 to $100 to do that VIN inspection for you. They also will double check that the vehicle is not stolen at that time and they will give you that form. That form cannot be downloaded over the internet. You cannot get that form anywhere. These police officers guard those forms with their life and they will fill them out as needed. So you will need to get a police officer to do that. If that is not an option for you, a lot of the larger municipalities, uh, police departments will have a day of the month that they will do those inspections and charge you something. So call, you know, your Harrison County Sheriff Department, Dallas County Sheriff's Department, Dallas Police, Austin Police, wherever you live, and see who does that. Somebody does that in your area for a fee, and they will verify the VIN number is a good number and get that done for you, okay? The next part to that is liens. If a lien is more than 10 years old, they don't worry about it. If the lien is... 10 years or less old, then it is the responsibility of the bond company to verify that the lien has been settled before they issue the bond. I can tell you that there are some bond people that will just sign off, that that has been verified, it's good to go, they're going to collect their money and they're going to get on down the road. Um, it's your responsibility to make sure that it's taken care of. Let me tell you how, how this happens. So. Before COVID, you could walk into your transportation or your, I'm sorry, your TXDMV office and get the form. Then you could drive to your insurance company and get the bond. And then you could drive to your local tax office and put all the documents through. If you did all that in one day, then chances were pretty good you were going to end up with a title. And if there was a lien holder that was not satisfied, they would be dealing with the state on that bond to get paid. What happens when you apply for a bonded title at the state level is the state looks up the registered owner. 
and if there is a lien holder of record, they look those people up, and they send both of them a letter that says, Joe Schmo is here trying to get a bonded title on the vehicle. Our records show that you are the registered owner or lien holder on this vehicle. If you have a claim against it, please contact us. Now, nine out of 10 times, 99 out of 100, whatever the ratio is, nobody, nobody does anything because the previous owner sold that car three years ago. They don't even know why a letter's coming to them, so they dismiss it. Uh, somebody paid off their loan and uh, never got their, their paperwork cleared up where the loan was taken off of the DMV's records. So the lien holder goes, yeah, we don't have a record of it and they don't deal with it. But people can be shitty. People that have liens on their cars, a lot of title loans really, but people that have liens on their cars that wanna sell it like to play dumb. And they'll tell you, oh, I lost my title or I bought it from my sister and she can't find her title. Any number of stories to get you to buy the car only to find out that there is in fact a valid lien on the car and that that agency that has leaned it, a credit company, a title loan company, whatever, uh, they're not gonna just give up on that. They wanna get paid. So if they contact the state before you get the car registered, you cannot register the car. You cannot transfer the title. You will not get a title for that car. If they contact them afterwards, say it all happened in one day or two days or they were asleep at the job or whatever it was, if they contact them afterwards, then that bond issue is between the state of Texas and that loan company, the title company or the original creditor or whoever it was. Um, if your agent that wrote your bond does not sign off where he checked and that loan was paid off, then you will not be able to get a bonded title. Even if you bought the bond, if it is not signed when it prints out the line that says this has been verified as paid, your local county tax office will not issue a title. So again, if you're trying to be swarmy, this is probably not for you. If you're dealing with sellers that are swarmy, which I will say is I bet you 50% of them, be aware. Do your business in the daytime when you can call and investigate these things before you make a purchase. Because a car with no title doesn't do you any good. If you're going to resell that car, you need to be able to title that car to make money. We buy I bet you 50% of our cars that we buy here at Buxton Auto are no title cars. We do our due diligence, we pay our insurance guy, uh, we have a good relationship with him, he treats us fair, we get the bonded titles taken care of, and then we're able to sell those cars. And obviously because there isn't a title and there is an amount of footwork that has to be done, uh, you know, we get a good price on them. But there's a headache, so everything is a trade-off. So that is Bonded Titles in Texas. My name is Tom with Buxton Auto in Fate, Texas. Uh, I hope you found this video informative. I think it uh, can make things a lot easier for people that are trying to figure out exactly how to do it and need a step-by-step. -step. You're welcome to leave me some comments down below with any particular questions. I'll do my best to answer them. And I hope you'll take a minute, if you would, in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, hit that like and subscribe button. If you want to be annoyed by the little notification that pops up, hit that bell. Every time I put up a video, it'll pop up and show you. I do informative videos. I do videos about the cars that I have for sale. I do general rants about the buy here, pay here car business, all sorts of fun things like that. If you made it this far, this is the end, and I appreciate you watching. Y'all have a good day. Okay, so trick my Bluetooth Chinese remote took a dump. This is the end, and I hope you have a good day.